Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what I am up to. So on today's video, oh my gosh, have I been inspired. My brain's just been swirling with all the ideas of what to do with that decoupage paper I just received. So in today's video, I am sharing a project with you all. It's a small little furniture piece and some gorgeous, oh my gosh, absolutely gorgeous decoupage paper. So I like the size of this three drawer. It's not huge, it's not big by any means. It's just a nice size. So I thought that decoupage paper would just work out nicely on this piece. But you know, as those flippers go, it's never just paint a piece and put some papers on. There's always other work that needs to be done. So as Chris was removing the hardware, we noticed a Sharpie date on this. We couldn't really tell. I think it cost $200, but we could not tell exactly what the year was that she had purchased this. And if you notice, yep, there were some vine veneer missing off the bottom. It's just chipped and gone. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take some Starbond CA glue and put some glue to tighten up what is there before using some Bondo to patch this. Now that I have that corner dealt with, I'm going to go ahead with some 220 sandpaper with my orbital sander and give a good scuff sanding to this rest of this piece. As you can see, as reflective it is, is in the light, it's really shiny. So I need to scuff sand it to give my paint something to grab onto. So unlike the veneer board on the sides of this piece, the top is actually a solid piece of wood. But as you can see, we've got some water damage. We've got some scrapes going on. I'm picking off a piece of tape that had been left behind. And since we have some water damage, we have those scrapes. I'm going to go ahead and start off with the 80 grit sandpaper to get it all the way down to that natural wood underneath. And then after I get that all removed, remember the lower the number, the more product it takes off. I'll go to a 150 to a 220 until it's nice and smooth. Now this really isn't a very big piece and I started taping it off like I was going to use the sprayer on it and I'm like, okay, I just have one piece right now that's just going to be black. Seems like a lot of work to get my sprayer hooked up and clean it out for this smaller piece. So I'm just gonna go ahead and brush it. So I'm using the Black Onyx Ready to Use Flat Sheen Paint from Walmart. This is my go-to black, I love it. So yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and paint that on just trying to have minimal paint on my brush so I don't have to deal with drips and runs and then we're going to do something else to the drawers. <laughs> So 
So it ended up taking me two coats to get this kind of coverage, good prep, good cleaning. I don't know why I did not show me using crud cutter to clean it. I don't know, sometimes you just forget to video everything. So now I'm gonna go ahead and seal this black paint in using polycrylic in the matte finish. And after my polycrylic is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and steel wool the entire piece, making sure that it's nice and smooth and opening up that black paint. And then I'm gonna go in with some 150 sandpaper on just a few of the edges, just to pop some of that natural wood back through. Now that I have everything sanded and distressed, I'm going back in and I'm gonna richen up that black paint using some Waverly Antiquing Wax. I just have a piece of drop cloth, so I'm gonna wipe on and then wipe off any excess. I just absolutely love how this richens up black paint. So I said that I taped this top off as if I thought I was going to be spraying it. So I, very protective when you've taken the time to sand something down to natural wood. Here's a little sneak peek of what I'm going to be doing to the drawers. So yes, this is some recycled decoupage paper and I'm trying to match up. I know that I'm not going to leave it natural because the top doesn't necessarily match that antiquing of those sunflowers. So first what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I don't have any tape residue left behind by cleaning this top off with just a wet wipe. And then also it's going to start opening up that wood and get ready to accept some stain. So I was going to try to color match a little bit so that I don't go too red or too black with my stain. So all my stain is, is some more of the Waverly Antiquing Wax and then just a dash of Waverly Ink Black Paint. And what that's going to do is just going to take the red out of that Antiquing Wax. And since this wood is still wet, I can apply more coats to get it darker, but to be on the safe side, preconditioning the wood as like wetting it down first kind of helps you control it. I did end up applying two coats and this is what that ink does. It just tones down that red. So now that it's dry, I'm gonna go ahead and seal it in with a few coats of the polycrylic in the matte finish. So now we are ready for the drawers. And you can see that I'm gonna keep the same hardware. I'm not sure if those spots are gonna show through the decoupage paper. So I'm gonna keep that same hardware. But here it is. I absolutely loved the color. Oh my goodness. I will link the Zazzle store where I ordered this from. This is the 18 weight, pound weight. Oh my gosh. I just absolutely love this. Now, the thing is, is this paper was actually made to go the opposite way. And I am applying it. Yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking the plants off, which is the darker area because I wanted to do this and until I folded it out like this and was going to get ready for you all to see it, I was like, oh, I did not realize that it was, it's fine though. It's fine. I'm going to use it as is. I already, my vision was already there. I tried a couple other pieces and I didn't like it. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to take the dark area off where the plants look like they're growing and I think it'll be absolutely fine but what I'm doing here is it comes folded so all I'm doing is taking some parchment paper in a no steam iron and just trying to get those folded areas out see I already had my vision I tried a couple other pieces I did not like it but so you can kind of see that the root you know the plants are growing this way but once I got it on and I kind of took that out out of the picture I really couldn't tell and I just absolutely already had the vision of this being like this. I already had fallen in love with the paper as you can tell. So yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and center it. It's a perfect fit for these three drawers. So I'm just making sure that I've got the flowers in. See, you can't even, once you take took the dark area off, it's not any big deal. So yep, I'm just gonna go ahead and 
make sure that it's all nice and level. I got my creases out. And so I'm just gonna be using poly, the same polycrylic in the mat to adhere it to this piece. Now, this it, it's always a little bit dry, so it kind of soaks in your polycrylic. And so I'm trying a new technique that I just recently, um, I don't know if I even saw anybody do it, but sometimes, you know, we're all struggling with wrinkles and tears and all that on paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my polycrylic on, and then I'm gonna take my Mr. Water bottle and mist it down just a little bit. The polycrylic is water base, and so no problems there. And then I'm just going to mist my paper also, so I have a little bit more play, and hopefully that'll help my wrinkles a little bit more. And then I do have a piece of saran wrap all balled up to help kind of use it to roll it out. Does that make sense? Yes, I'm just trying to make this as flat as I possibly can. Yes, I have this little dresser on one of my Black & Decker. Um, it's a work table thing that I had thrifted. I highly suggest any, anything that you can find that has wheels that can lift it up so you don't have to bend over. Oh, if you're out thrifting garage selling, pick it up if it's cheap enough. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to work down the drawer so it's nice to be able to spin that around and get it at the angle that I wanted to be instead of having to move my camera. So same thing, polycrylic, and then I'll mist it down and then do the same thing with the paper, mist it down, and then use that saran wrap to help guide the paper and get any air bubbles or creases out. see depending on what your back color is behind your paper it did change it just a little bit but I still love it just as much so if you did like a white a cream maybe matched it a little bit more but I do already love I I'm in love with these sunflowers so now I'm just going back over them with that parchment paper making sure that I got a little bit more of the wrinkles out it I also actually Think that this helps dry it and really adhere it to the wood also so yep no steam iron parchment paper just working it around the pieces and wetting it down it did help move it i i have to say that i would probably use that technique again so now to cut it off the edges i'm just going to use some 150 sandpaper it's pretty much dry i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say that it's completely dry <laughs> dry i don't know about you all do you guys get impatient so yep i'm just going to gingerly just go do that back and forth motion to cut that excess paper off And then to cut between the drawers, I have a very sharp X-Acto knife. And I'm just gingerly guiding it down the, in between the drawers. I added the tape on it to protect my paint job from getting any polycrylic accidentally on it. 
Now I remove the drawers so that way I can go back in and I can get that excess that was cut off in between. Just doing a downward sanding motion, making sure that it's just a nice crisp line blended in with, this, with the drawer front. I'm editing this the more I'm just like oh my gosh I just absolutely love that paper but I still got to finish up so now I'm going to go ahead and put a couple coats of the polycrylic on to seal this paper in So I did see a stamp somewhere that said 73 on this piece, so I don't know how terribly it, old it is, but I'm pretty sure that it could use a drink. So I'm going in with some Howard's Wax, and this is a citrus one, so it'll help with a smell. There's not really a smell. I can't really smell since COVID, but that gives that that nice fresh scent. And oh my gosh, just look how it's popping alive, this wood. That poor wood needed a drink. So now it's on to the hardware and it's just, they're just unique little poles. So what I got here is I actually poured some distilled vinegar in the bottom of this. I'm going to take it in my house. I'm going to add hot, hot, hot water to it. Just tap water and a little bit of Dawn dish soap and then let them soak for about an hour. Now they've been soaking for about an hour and I'm going to finish polishing them with some Barkeeper's Friend. But look at how that just starts getting, I don't know if it's grime or the finish on there, but the vinegar and hot water just starts to remove it. And then the Barkeeper's Friend just with, I'm just using one of those green scouring pads that's been, it's been used a little bit. But as you see, it's just taking off that like I said, I don't know if it's a finish or if it's just a general use gunk that builds up over time. But, oh, I just absolutely love it. Yep, I'm just going to be polishing these up. I don't want hardware to detract from those beautiful sunflowers. Now that I've got them all cleaned and dry, I'm going to buff them to a little bit more of a shine, make sure there's no scratches on them, just using some very fine grit steel wool. And as you can see, it's really polishing them right up. I can't help but say, oh my gosh, I just love that paper. So now I'm just going and trying to find the holes. It is just a wee bit wet. The paper is not totally dried yet. So I'm like, oh, maybe I better get an X-Acto knife and poke those little holes first before trying to pop that screw in. But see why I wanted to keep the hardware kind of a muted but still pretty. That way it didn't detract from that beautiful paper. <music> Oh, 
Okay, so what did you think? Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved. That was a small piece of furniture that I've had for a while, just looking for the right inspiration of what to do with it because the drawers are small. I really didn't know that that top, I thought that top was going to be veneer board. So it was nice that that top could be sanded down. And we've got some natural wood showing. Oh my goodness, and putting that paper. Yeah, the paper, I spinned it, <laughs> but hey, I think it's absolutely gorgeous. Who says you always have to go the right way, right? Okay, well, there's signs that say that. But anyway, <laughs> I absolutely love that sunflower paper. And it with that muted shade, oh my goodness, my heart. And then just cleaning up the hardware so that it doesn't distract from and take away from that beautiful paper. I just absolutely love it. So give me a quick comment down below. Have I inspired you in any way to look at secondhand furniture in a new way? And are you gonna pop over and check out the Zazzle store along with Piglet's Closet to see if any of the papers inspire you all? So thank you so much for watching today's video. And as always, if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you are new and you're checking out our content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.